Okay, so this year, I decided not to fool anyone with any of my cheesy jokes on April Fools. But that didn't stop everyone else. And that's because, traditionally, there is always a bunch of papers released on April Fools, to some extent exploring the funnier side of science. Something that started back in 2002 with this paper right here. A paper that tries to argue that one of the labs at the University of Arizona is actually cooler than the other lab. And I guess they use science to try to prove that. But essentially, ever since then, a lot of different scientists, and especially a lot of astronomers, kind of join in on the fun, and every single year there's been some kind of a paper out there basically trying to present something kind of funny, but usually ended up being kind of cringy. And this year is no exception. And so, a whole wonderful person. In this video, let's explore some of these papers, and I guess also talk about why these particular points are being explored. Because they actually do highlight some of the biggest problems in modern science. And I actually wanted to start with this one from the University of Stavanger in Norway. Solving the Hubble tension with a non-pi value of pi. And that title itself kind of made me giggle. Because if you watched a lot of my videos previously, especially the ones where I try to tackle some of the more controversial theories, in a nutshell, many of them take this approach. They basically try to redefine some kind of a constant, making it different from what we think it is, and then try to solve the entire universe by basically just modifying a few numbers here and there. And so, just as a joke, the researchers did the same here. But they basically changed the pi. And guess what? Turns out, the Hubble tension, one of the biggest problems in modern cosmology, kind of sort of disappears if you do change the value of pi, especially making it somewhat variable. And in case you're not certain about why this is funny, I mean, pi is the fundamental constant. It's completely unchangeable, and we actually know its exact value down to 105 trillion numbers after the decimal point. This record was actually beat on the pi day of 2024 by a US computer storage company based in California. You can read their press release in the description below. And then we have this paper. And I think this is probably the funniest of them all. A proposal of multi-messenger astrology. And if you know anything about modern astronomy, this by itself is actually kind of hilarious. Because basically that's a kind of a buzzword for a lot of modern studies. Multi-messenger blank. Trying to study various phenomena by using different frequencies of light and by trying to understand them from different perspectives. And so likewise, here, by using the cosmic rays, gravitational waves, neutrinos, and possibly a bunch of other stuff, here the authors redefine a new approach to astrology. In order to predict the future, just a little bit better. With them even proposing using things like dark matter or axion-like particles to make the predictions for our personalities and for how life is going to be even more accurate. But to make this study even funnier, here the authors even added their astrological signs as part of their main qualifications. And this right here represents the perfect spirit of astronomy on April Fools. And actually not just astronomy, a lot of other sciences as well. But the thing is, I find that for astronomers and for astrophysicists, it's just a little bit easier to do April Fools, because first of all, you can explore so many different topics out there, and second of all, if a biologist did this, some people might unfortunately not really get a joke and maybe even think that it's true, and this could create a bit of a controversy. And interestingly enough, one of these studies was actually serious enough to even fool the critics. The study was titled Stupendously Large Black Hole, Coalescence, and Hubble Tension. Once again, trying to solve Hubble tension, but this time basically by suggesting that it could all be just a result of enormously large black holes orbiting around the universe, which ends up forming enormously large gravitational waves. And the thing is, the amount of actual science that went into this paper is absolutely ridiculous, with their conclusion actually making sense. They actually do kind of solve the Hubble tension here by basically suggesting that the entire solar system and our galaxy are sort of surfing on these tremendously large gravitational waves, but maybe only one small problem. The black holes they propose have a mass that's ridiculous. These black holes are so big that they practically make no sense. And here we're talking about masses that are trillions and trillions of times bigger, or more massive, than the biggest black hole ever discovered. And so yeah, okay, this could maybe make sense, and is maybe not in the realm of impossibility, but these types of huge massive black holes would definitely be visible from everywhere. We would see them a long time ago. As a matter of fact, as you can see in this particular schematic, their mass basically is just a little bit less massive than the entire universe. So definitely a cool proposition and a pretty cool joke, 
But interestingly, because this is a paper and it was actually reviewed by someone else, the scientific reviewers actually even pointed out that they were not sure if this is a joke or an actual study. And so yeah, it's one of those studies that actually really fooled everyone. And so congratulations to these wonderful people for actually fooling scientists into possibly thinking that this is maybe real. And then we have studies like this. Okay, I keep calling them studies. These are not actual studies. I guess they're more like jokes, sort of. So anyway, we have this with a simple title, Deeper Learning in Astronomy. And by itself, this is actually brilliant because even though it is a joke, it kind of touches on a really important topic. It touches on the idea that a lot of modern research is mostly done by machine learning and especially deep learning, where a black box is set up inside which a kind of artificial intelligence learns how to interpret the features in the data. And here we suggest that perhaps there may be some merit to a new approach in which humans are used instead of machines to understand the data. This may even apply to fields other than astronomy. And that's actually a pretty good summary of modern science. A lot of modern science, and actually basically a lot of everything around us, including data analysis, including business analysis, even stock trading, is basically done by machine learning that tries to make predictions and tries to come up with conclusions. And so in many different fields, the humans have now been removed, and in most cases we actually have no idea how certain conclusions are even reached. This is especially true of a lot of studies involving huge amounts of data. And so this black box phenomenon is a bit of a challenge because it's kind of hard to justify the conclusion if you have no idea how it was actually reached. And though this is a joke, it's actually a joke that's uh, technically not really funny, as in it's basically a real problem. But I guess still worth mentioning and still worth talking about because I guess it is kind of funny maybe. Uh, if you look at it from a certain angle. Okay, let's talk about something a little bit less serious. This study focuses on the solar eclipse that's coming up really soon, or that possibly already happened when you're watching this. And here it asks a simple question. Which animal has seen the most total solar eclipses? Specifically focusing on the number of species and the overall geographic range of various species inhabiting Earth. But to make sure that nobody takes this seriously, the species they investigate is this, the horseshoe crab. With the conclusion being that horseshoe crabs, because they've existed for millions of years, must have seen thousands of times more solar eclipses than humans ever will. And so basically the idea here is that we have a lot of catching up to do. And the math here suggests that we actually can catch up in approximately 400,000 years. Although here we also have to remember that in approximately 300 million years, solar eclipses will no longer be possible. The moon is just going to be too far from planet Earth to actually cover the sun completely. And the only reason it's able to cover the sun is complete accident. It just so happens that the size of the moon in the skies and the size of the sun in the skies are perfectly matched. Why? I don't think anybody knows. Okay, maybe they know, but they're not telling anyone. And then of course we had to have at least one study somehow integrating astronomy with food. And this actually happens quite a lot pretty much every year. And this time it's pasta markers astrophysical data visualization with pasta-like markers. Yeah, I guess the title kind of makes sense here. But if you're asking why, well, the answer is simple. It stems from the compelling desire to blend two beloved aspects of human culture, science and Italian cuisine. Yup, I guess it makes sense. With pasta also being an acronym, promoting astrophysical studies through elements. And it's actually a Python package. As in, it's an actual plugin you can install for Python, which then transforms all of your graphs and adds a little bit of flavor to them. Italian flavor. Mostly pasta-shaped. And so here, this is basically an enhancement of various astrophysical data visualizations. Honestly, kind of looks cool. I really hope scientists start using this a little bit more. And last but not least, there was a study exploring the planet Vulcan which is a hypothetical planet scientists thought could exist back in the 17th and 18th century. And it was supposed to exist somewhere between the orbit of Mercury and the Sun, but would be very difficult to see because it's too close to the Sun and thus almost impossible to detect. Here's roughly where its orbit would lie. And here the scientists proposed that because of the 2024 solar eclipse, we might once again be able to possibly look for it. Now here it's actually meant as a joke, so hopefully nobody takes this seriously, but the study does make some really, really funny points on top of this. 
For example, it reminds us that this was both a planet before Pluto and it was also not a planet before Pluto as well. As in, it was able to acquire and lose its status of a planet way, way before Pluto ever did. Which is basically used as the main reason why we should look for this planet again. But more intriguingly here, the researcher even uses a very well known gravitational scattering mechanism known as the of kozai mechanism that could actually be responsible for the change of orbit of Vulcan, thus showing us that it basically just disappeared from its current location because its orbit became extremely inclined. So once again, some relatively good signs here and a very well presented joke, but maybe a joke that some people might take seriously. Anyway, definitely well written and pretty well researched. And so in my opinion, these were basically the highlights of the Science April Fools 2024. Or technically, I guess, Astronomy April Fools. It's extremely difficult to find April Fools papers from other fields. But if you did find something else that was super funny or super interesting, please post it in the comments below. But also maybe check out some of the previous videos I made on April Fools in the description below as well. But on that note, tomorrow we're going to be talking about actual science. And so subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.